Okay. Um, so I hope the definition is clear. So, and further we define A is a non quadratic residue or a quadratic non residue, but it's called NQR if it's not a QR. Again, this is modulo n for any given n. We can define the quadratic residues for any n. And so just definitional stuff, zero is always a quadratic residue. One is always a quadratic residue. That's clear. Just, this just to make the definition clear. So it's one. Okay. So I guess we'll, and I think we should move on to prim primes now. So, uh, quadratic residues are mostly useful when you're talking about prime moduli. General n, it's not as useful. So, let's say we have a prime p, an odd prime p. If we have any odd prime p for any odd prime p, Prove that there are p minus one by two QRs. Can you uh, scroll up a bit? Sure. This is it. These are just the definitions, and now this is like a question. What have you written there, like uh, in the parentheses one to n, then arrow? Um, so the, you obtain the, the quadratic residues defined as such are also just, you take all the residues mod n and you square them and whatever you get, those are the quadratic residues. Oh. If you reduce the modulo n, obviously. Okay, so can anyone improve that for any odd prime p there exist p minus one by two qrs? It's really just using the definition. So for some of the people that joined, um, for any odd prime p, uh, I guess I'll move, move over the definition again. So a number a residue or a number modulo some n is called a quadratic residue if there exists an integer such that that modulus n divides x square minus a. Okay, like it's basically just you take the residue set one up to n and you square it. Those numbers, those residues that you get once you square, those are your quadratic residues. The ones that aren't in that set, those are non-quadratic residues or NQRs. QR and NQR are the short forms that we'll use. So just to, zero is always a QR, so is one. Though we'll all, often be talking about non-zero quadratic residues because zero is not one. Okay. So now the question is for any odd prime P, prove that there exists P minus one by two quadratic residues. So just consider, yeah. Okay, move on. Yeah, we just consider the set one square, two square, all up to p minus one by two the whole squared. Yeah. And all of them are QRs. And yeah. if we add any other element to the set, then it's the diff like p if we add some x squared, then uh, there, there's p minus x already, so the uh, difference that will be divisible by p. So they are congruent modulo p. Yeah, correct. 
So we can't add anything more. And these are maximal because if you have some two in this sites inside this set, x square congruent to y square, then x not congruent to y and x not congruent to minus y. So it's not because these are prime moduli. Because if x square congruent to y square, then that implies that p divides x square minus y square is equal to x minus y into x plus y. And we can't, the reason why we're dealing with prime moduli here is if we have, if we don't have a prime, if this is some number n, then the factors could distribute and we don't, wouldn't have something as clean as this. Okay, so I hope that was clear. Why there are p minus one by two qrs. So, and similarly, uh, also I missed that this, these are non-zero qrs. So there are p minus one by two non-zero qrs. And p minus one by two n qr, and there's zero. This is for any odd prime p. Okay. So I, Anandya, I think class covered that what primitive roots are. So I'm going to be using that. If you have a primitive root, any modulo any prime p, we obviously have a primitive root g. So we can think about g to the k. This will span our residue set. If k is even, this is a quadratic residue. And if k is odd, this is a non-quadratic residue. And this is often like a very useful way to think about quadratic residues and non-quadratic residues because it, it gives you the correct intuition for what why these quadratic residues and non-quadratic residues behave nicely. Okay, so can anybody prove that both of these hold that if k is odd, it's a quadratic residue, and if k is even. And it's a, if k is even, it's a quadratic residue, and if k is odd, then it's a quadratic non residue Can anyone prove this? What is g over here? Um, g is a primitive root. Um, so basically, this just means that g to the x congruent to one implies is equivalent to p minus one to the x. That's what the, g to the x. It, it basically generates the set, like g to the one up to g to the p minus one are all distinct because the order of g is p minus one. Uh, I hope that's clear. Yeah, thanks. Do people have either way? Like if K is even QR or K or NQR, do people have either of these? Yeah, I have an answer. Okay. Uh, if you consider any even k, then of course it has to be a QR. Yeah, it's a QR, obviously. Okay. And uh, since g is a primitive root, uh, g to the power one, g to the power two, and all up to g to the power p minus one are all all give dif distinct remainders modulo p. Yes, makes sense. And uh, there are p minus one by two such k that you could input. Yeah, already. And there are p minus one by two. QRs for odd times p. So we're done. Yeah, we're done. Okay, so that works out. And this is this is fair, but you can also just work it out more explicitly. And I think to give the intuition, if you have g to the 2k plus 1 congruent to x square, we could write x as a primitive in terms of the primitive root as 2L. Like x is congruent to g to the L for some L as by the definition of a primitive root. And g to the 2k plus 1 congruent to g to the 2L 
would imply that g to the 2k minus 2l plus 1 is congruent to 1. And this implies that p minus 1 divides an odd number. Right? And that just doesn't work. And in general, I think this gives the intuition for why primitive roots are nice mod odd primes is because 2 always divides p minus 1. And that's what gives this contradiction here. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So what we just got is that g to the odd is an NQR. And g to the even is a QR. So I think you can see why these are not true. Right? These are true because even plus even is even, even plus odd is odd, odd plus odd is even. Make sense? This is true for all non-zero stuff. Because obviously zero breaks and zero breaks just this one, right? Yeah. So does this make sense? Why this is true? This is true for odd primes p only or for uh, this is only true for primes. Different. Only for primes. Because this proof that we presented only odd works primes, right? Like... Only for odd primes, yes. Yeah. Because this proof we presented only works for odd primes. And that's what we're using. In fact, for some other things, like you can easily combine some contradiction to this or to this one. Two times two is four. And mod four, that doesn't work. Because two and two are both non quadratic residues, but four is. Oh, that works. But it doesn't work for any general end. Um, so, do people see why this is true? Make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now, this structure will we're gonna this is gonna be the probably the main definition of today is the Lee Johnson rule. So this is called the, it's pronounced the Lee Johnson symbol with, of A with respect to P, but it's just gonna be A by P for today. So it's one if A is a quadratic residue, zero if P divides A, and negative one if A is a quadratic non-residue. And, and because of these three facts that we just derived, it allows us to hopefully see that A by P into B by P is equal to a b by p. So just one into one is one, negative one into negative one is negative one, and one into negative one is negative one. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And you can also work out that if p divides a, then p divides a b, and both sides are zero. So what this just gave us is that the symbol, the Legendre symbol, is completely multiplicative. Any two a b their product just works out very nicely. And many questions just boil down. And just this builds a lot of ideas. Just the fact that this is multiplicative, and you can do a lot of that. So, okay, another question. This is Euler's criterion. Called Euler's criterion. It's a by p congruent to a to the p minus one by two mod p. Can someone try this? There's three cases that we need to be checking.
if a is a qr then the uh, rhs is one yeah and the lhs is also one because we get uh, x to the power p minus one mod p yeah Yeah, which is one mod p. Yes. To the power Makes p. sense. Okay. There's two more cases. I was thinking when x is you know, like x square is not a qr, like a is not a qr. I was thinking about that case. When uh, a is not a q, uh, no, is n q r, we can write a to be g s to l, where l is odd. Yeah. Yeah. And then a raised to p minus one by two will be like g s to p minus one by two, the whole raised to l. Yeah. It's minus one, the whole raised to l, which is minus one. Yes, because l is odd. And the uh, like the r l r LHS is one minus one. I mean, yeah, correct. So yeah, works out for this case as well. And for p divides a, obviously, both sides are zero. Right, just by definition, both sides are zero. So then, what we got is Euler's criterion, and this is very powerful, often very useful mm -hmm. to convert this Asian symbol back into this congruence. And we'll be using a lot of this, especially in summing over the Asian symbol. And like a direct corollary of this is that negative one by p is equal to negative one to the p minus one by two. Because obviously for negative one, it doesn't, the mod p doesn't really make a difference. Because this left hand side is one plus or minus one, the right hand side is plus or minus one, mod p doesn't make a difference. Here. And you can probably notice that this is just for, for mass Christmas theorem. Right, um, negative one is a QR if and only if p congruent to one mod four. Right. That follows from just this, and so a lot of this discussion is just on like no topples over some simpler theorems. Again, okay, hopefully the Euler's criterion proof was clear. Was it unclear to someone? It's fine, you can ask. I'm going to take that to mean that it's clear, I guess. Okay. So, until now, everything that we've derived has been surrounding just the fact that it's multiplicative. And just that gives a good amount of structure. But this is really the life force of this whole discussion is going to be the quadratic reciprocity law. It's like a very non trivial fact. If P and Q are distinct odd primes, then P by Q into Q by P equals negative one to the P minus one by two is Q minus one by two. And the proof for this is non trivial and I will not, it's quite long, so I won't be presenting it. But this is going to be very useful. And this is obviously for odd primes. We also have a version of this for two.
So the second one just tells us exactly when two is a quadratic recipe. In general, I think what the quadratic recipe property law lets us do, it, it lets us convert information about QR slash NQR's mod P into modular info about P. And so like a broad schema for these kinds of ideas is that you'll get that three by P equals one or something of the sort, where here three is a prime, which is the important bit. And you'll get that P by three into three by P equals negative one to the P minus one by two by the quadratic reciprocity law. And because three by P is one, this gives us the P by three equals negative one to the P minus one by two. And this would imply that if P congruent to one mod three, the left-hand side is one, the right-hand side needs to be one. So P congruent to one mod four. And if P congruent to two mod three, then P congruent to three mod four. But the, the idea is that if you work modulo small primes like three, four, like three or five, stuff like that, or in general, any prime, you get you can convert this info about it being a quadratic residue, quadratic residue or a non-quadratic residue into modular information about P like this. It can get complicated, but you will get some modular information about P from any piece of info of whether something is a quadratic residue or not. And that's plentiful in most cases. Okay. So the next few questions that we'll be discussing will be discussing how to use the quadratic response law. So just an initial question. Sorry, mod three. Does the question make sense? If X and Y are co-prime, prove that all its fact all of the factors of X square plus XY plus Y square are zero or one mod three. So give it a try. For like five minutes.
Do people have any progress? Or what are they trying? What are you guys trying? Next, I'll just give more time. Could people tell me what they're trying now? It can be very minimal progress. Just anything. We can just let be the right expert. This my script is my side. So mm -hmm. we can say X cube congruent to Y cube one cube. Okay. And then if like P is congruent to two one cube. Then P minus one is one one. So X is congruent to Y. Um, could you repeat that? I couldn't hear that. I said oh, so if P is congruent to two one K, then P minus one is one more K. Yeah, P minus one is one more K. So like X cube X is to P minus one is just congruent to X is to three K times X. Which is y is to take it in sex, which is y is to be minus one. Okay. So x is congruent to y one t, and that three again is not work. So we have the three cannot be the order because three does not divide be the order. Yeah. of x, y inverse, but um, why does y inverse exist? Oh, so like uh, x is to, okay, let p minus one be three k plus one. Hmm. So x is to three k plus one equals x is to three k times x, which is y is to three k times x. Okay. Which is also y is to three k plus one. Okay. And if like P divides Y, well, then P should divide X, so P does not divide Y. Well. Yes, so, uh, the co-prime fact. Yeah. If P divides Y, P divides X, which is just a contradiction. Okay. 
So then this gives us that x is congruent to y naught b. Yeah. So x square plus x square plus y square is just tx square not p. So p divides 3, which is again not possible. Implies p divides 3. Fair. Okay. P divides 3x square, which implies p divides 3, because if p divides x, as earlier, p would divide y. Yeah, this works. So then our only prime factors are 3 or t congruent to 1 mod p, which establishes the fact, right? Do people follow this proof? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so the proof I was intending was slightly different, but it gets at the same thing. If p divides x square plus y square plus x y, then this is a common idea within quadratic residues, which will just be completing the square. So we get that 4x square plus 4xy plus y square is congruent to negative 3y square, right? And this gives us that 2x plus y the whole square is congruent to negative 3y square. And if p does not divide y, this would give us that 2x plus y times y inverse, the whole square, was congruent to negative 3, which would imply that negative 3 is a quadratic with you. In, in general, when you see anything like this, we can get a quadratic with you, the idea. Usually negative 3 will get you'll always get the negative 3 is a quadratic residue. And obviously, we already established that if p divides y, then p divides x, contradiction. So this is the, really our only case. So now we consider negative 3 by p is equal to 1. But by the quadratic reciprocity law, URL gives that 3 by p, p by 3, equals negative 1 to the 3 minus 1 by 2, that's 1, times p minus 1 by 2. Right? which is just negative 1 by p. And since this is 1, we can cancel these. Do people see why we can do that? Because imagine we multiply both sides with negative 1 by p here. By the quadrat, by the multiplicativeness of the Legendre symbol, it just becomes this. And this is the square of something that's plus minus 1. It's just 1. And that's something that's nice about this algebra is that everything is plus minus one. You can multiply both sides by itself and it'll work out. Does that make sense? Why we then get that p by 3 equals 1? If people don't follow, I can repeat because I did go over that a little quickly. Uh, can you please repeat once? Yeah. So we have negative 3 by p equals 1 which just gives us that 3 by p equals negative 1 by p. Do people follow why this is true? We multiply both sides with negative 1 by p. We expand this as negative 1 by p into 3 by p. Negative 1 by p, the whole square is just 1. Yeah. Okay. But we also have that 3 by p into p by 3 is equal to negative 1 to the 3 minus 1 by 2. p minus 1 by 2 is equal to negative 1 to the p minus 1 by 2 is equal to negative 1 by 2. So then from these two equations, we obviously get that p by 3 equals 1. We have 3 by p, p by 3 equals negative 1 by p, and 3 by p equals negative 1 by 2. Does this make sense? Yes. OK, so this implies that p congruent to 1 mod 3. and just as earlier we're done, if p not equal to 3, obviously. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to consider this, uh, at least to apply the quadratic reciprocity. Okay, so, so the idea here is, in general, whenever we're considering stuff like this, we want to consider some prime that divides it, because quadratic res residues only really work mod primes, at least they're only this useful when they're mod primes. And you complete the square, you get a quadratic residue, here negative 3, and then that negative 3 will allow us to apply the QRL to give us modular info about P, and that finishes the problem. Okay. Let's move to harder.
the question makes sense right yes Try approaching it similarly, right? If you want to prove something like this, you probably want to have to track a prime that divides A, obviously. In general, this a common idea here is information about A or a number or a number in general is equivalent to finding information about its prime factors. I think I have a proof. Okay. 
Yeah, so consider uh, any prime Q which divides A, not Q will be odd. Mm, Q odd, nice. Then uh, first of all, going mod 4, the left hand side is 1 plus 0. Mod 4, yes, A congruent A odd implies that A square is congruent to 1 mod 4. And this obviously implies that A square plus B square is congruent to 1 mod 4. Because P is odd, we would need B to be an even number. Yeah. So uh, P is 1 mod 4. Okay, so we have uh, Q divides A. Q divides A. Hence, uh, B square is congruent to P mod Q. B square is congruent to P mod Q. Hence, uh, P is a QR modulo Q. Yeah, P is a QR mod Q. Hence, uh, the P by Q is 1. P by Q equals 1. Yeah, and so we get from the quadratic reciprocity law that uh, Q by P is also 1 just because P is 1 mod 4. Yeah, Q by P equals negative 1 to the P minus 1 by 2, Q minus 1 by 2. And we just established that P minus 1 is divisible by 4. So this is still even, so this is still 1. So then this implies that q by p is also equal to 1. Yeah, and we yeah. do this for all primes q dividing a. and For all q that divides a. So if we were to write a as like as some q1 to the alpha 1, or qn to the alpha n, then a by p is just q1 to the q1 by p to the alpha 1. Q2 by P to the alpha 2 dot dot dot. And each of these are one. So then this is just one. And this is really the idea that we're going for. This is like a recurring theme in QR questions is that you I get some information like this about the primes that divide a number. And that will give you information about the number like this. Okay. Fine. Did people follow the proof? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one last question before we move on to the assembly manipulation. This is chapter one. Let Q be an odd prime. And let R be an integer. Okay. Do people understand the problem? So we have to prove that there is no K and N, so that 4K Q plus R divides Q to the N plus 1. And all of these are meant to be somewhat instructive in this process of applying the quadratic reciprocity law. So they, there will be recurring themes that you're trying to work modulos, like primes that divide things, and then coming back the number later on to derive a contradiction note. Okay, I'll give you like five to ten minutes to try this.
So could people tell me what they're trying? Just to... It can be very basic, just starting point, anything. I am audible, right? Just to make sure. Yeah, okay. So whenever anyone has any progress, just tell me. Or even like anything that fine. Is there a lot of So like the conditions are quite weird and quite unusual of a problem, but how do you think just how do you think we should approach this just to begin with? Just based on our what we've been trying to do uh, in the early problems as well, what we tried to do. How do you think we should start? Maybe take S to be a prime dividing for KQ plus R. Yeah. SS3 mod four. Um, such that SS3 mod 4? No. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. 
uh, like oh, what did you mean like we then there might not exist a prime no no i made a mistake i made a mistake yeah but this is the correct idea this is how we should start in general for these problems this is like the configuration in some sense this is what we're trying to do can you repeat what you said once yeah so we take a prime that divides 4k q per second and in that this divides, is uh, yeah that divides q and q to the n plus 1 and so what does that give us this is 3 mod 4 as mali pointed out that's going to yeah. be important i think i should um, just say one thing this will be split into two cases the two cases that you should be considering and even so can someone deal with any even for me so say n equals 2k uh, n equals 2l so then what do we get minus 1 is a qr mod s minus 1 is a qr mod s for all s for all s That divides four k cube plus r, and what does that tell us about s? S is one mod four. Yeah. it implies that s is congruent to 1 mod 4 for all s divides 4k q plus r and do people see why this is wonky this is 3 mod 4 it can't have all factors 1 mod 4 right do people see that yes yeah if 4k q plus r is like again the same idea this you'll see this a lot 4k q plus r is equal to some product of primes p1 to the alpha 1 p n to the alpha n if all of these were one this would be congruent to one and that's our contradiction that we to predict right and this is true by euler's criterion fct what do we want i hope this part is clear now the harder case in odd I should also clarify that something that's very useful here is if a congruent to b mod p, then mod something, then a by that something. If a congruent to b mod s, then a by s is equal to b by s. And this is like this. So many things for which this is true, but often this is all you need. Like this is a much stronger statement than this, but often this is really all you need. And this is like the info that you want to be zooming into. and also another important fact that maybe is unclear is that a by s to the odd is always equal to a by s because this is plus or minus 1 and plus minus 1 to the odd is plus minus 1 do people follow these two facts yes okay this will just make your manipulation of these objects a little faster
So it's going to be like this. We have s divides over k plus k plus r divides q to the n plus one, where here n is odd. And we're trying to do something with this. We get minus q is a qr mod s. Yeah, implies that. So we get that q to the odd is congruent to negative one mod s. And as discussed, this would imply that q by s equals negative one by s. And this just implies that negative q by s equals one. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Nice. This is the type of information that we've been looking for usually. And S is odd. I think that was mentioned. Yeah, S is odd. We get that q by s is equal to minus 1 by s. Yeah. Okay. And at this stage, like thinking of the earlier problems, once we get something that's a quadratic residue or a non-quadratic residue, we tend to just apply the QRL and continue. Mm. So, can someone continue? So, at this stage, we want to be applying the QRL, even if it gets messy. Like, how does it look? Can you please repeat? So, at this stage, we have something as a quadratic residue. Earlier, what this meant was we should be looking for to convert this into modular information about S. So, can you do that? Uh, okay.
So like when you're applying the QR, what does that look like? Can anyone tell me? Uh, what should be applied right? So like we have Q by S into S by Q equals negative one to the Q minus one by two, S minus one by two, right? Yeah. And we already know that negative Q by S equals one. We try and apply this and we get S by Q equals negative one by Q into negative one to the Q minus one by two. Wait, sorry, negative one by s into s minus one by two. Does this make sense? We multiplied both sides by negative one by s, and negative two by s is one, as discussed here. Make sense? Yes. Okay, and if we write this, if we rewrite this, we just get negative one to the s minus one by two into q plus one by two. Yeah. Okay. So can people continue from here? Because we have two pieces of information that they gave us. Like here, there's kind of two things that are warring that you should be looking at. This is determined by S being three or one mod four, right? And this will also determine whether R is a quadratic residue mod P or mod Q or not. So like those two facts are gonna be the things that are probably gonna be causing issue. Does that make sense? So this is true for all S that divides R. And again, as earlier, we're going to derive a contradiction from that. The contradictions can get more complicated as you see. And we, we want to be working, like which modulos do you think we want to be working? We have two pieces of information, R congruent to three mod four, and R negative R by Q equals one. So we're gonna be wanting to be working mod four and mod Q, and we're gonna be trying to come up with some contradiction modulo those two numbers, right? So let's take some simple cases. If S is congruent to three mod four, what does that imply? It implies that S by Q is equal to negative one to the Q plus one by two. So we've taken, and similarly we have that if S congruent to one mod four, then S by Q is equal to one. Right? Does this make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these are our two little cases and these are the only two types of primes that divide this number. And that's key. That we have either this or this. Like these come connected. And the fact that this is one is very nice. It doesn't really matter in the product. 
So at this point, would we would be writing this as a product of times and let's see what happens. Can anyone finish? Yes. Okay, continue. Uh, S by Q is R by Q. S by Q is equal to R by Q? Yes. Why? Because uh, S divides four time, uh, something times Q plus R. Yeah, so this implies that S divides R. Uh, yeah. Or like, but how does this imply that this S by Q? No, no. Okay, okay, no. This would be true if S is congruent or something like that. Yeah. Divides yeah. doesn't really have that. Yeah. At this stage, we are looking for a modular contradiction. Mod 4 and mod Q. Um, so let's say that 4k, 4qk plus r is equal to pi si alpha. I should write this for s1 to the alpha 1 into sn to the alpha. N. Yeah, n is fine. And each of these are one of these two types. Each of these are? Each of the SI are either this type or is this type. Yeah, one or three mod four. Okay. If they're one mod four, then S by Q equals one. If they're yeah. three mod four, then and that'll be Q. Can you tell me how many of the SI like counted with multiplicity? How many SI are three mod four? How many primes are three mod four inside this problem? Odd. Yeah, an odd, an number. odd number. Yeah. Right. So this is odd, right? So let's say T. So we have some odd T number of things, right? So then can you tell me what this will be? Because of this, this is our key save saving grace. This is going to be R by Q, which is going to be minus one to the power Q plus one by two. Yeah, and raised to T, but that doesn't matter, right? Yeah, because T is odd, right? Yes, exactly. And what we got, what we had in the question is that negative R by Q is equal to one. So can, can anyone really tell me the finish? So uh, you have minus one by Q is equal to minus one to the power of Q plus one by two. Okay, yeah, and we have minus one by Q. Both sides are minus one by Q. Minus Q two, yeah, like this, right? Yeah, and by all this criterion, it is Q minus Just, one by two. Yeah, is equal to minus one to the Q minus one by two. Which is not possible. And not possible, yeah, contradiction. Because this implies that negative one is equal to one, right? equal to one. So yeah, this was a harder problem because there's it. The ideas are still the same standard ideas, but they can get more complicated, like this, where there's multiple modulo it, after two, you have more than two, and you're finding a contradiction between those two moduli. Okay. 
um i think time is nearly up so we can't cover bayesian manipulation if people want to try a question that's similar to this then a nice problem of this that's less convoluted is 2 to the a minus 1 divides 3 to the b minus 1 implies a equals 1 or b is even so if people want to try something they can try this one it's similar to this and i think we're going to have to stop them for i'll to the uh, power a minus 1 divides 3 to the power b minus 1 implies that a is 1 or b is even right yeah and uh, we're trying to prove that we're trying to prove the implication yeah, yeah, yeah. okay It's similar to this problem. It, it just helps with because a lot of these manipulations are kind of busy, like they're confusing. So yeah. Follows almost the entire ribbon, like almost the entire schema of. Take a prime, everything is almost the same. And if people want another problem that's less standard, prove that if phi of phi to the n minus one equals phi to the n minus one, phi, sorry, then the GCD of m and n will be greater than one. The problems above have been somewhat standard, and this is be more like general NT. Like the other ones, the main idea has been put out of as due, and that's been the only idea. It's just applying QRL again and again. Whereas this will be more varied. Okay, so I guess with that we'll end. Is that fine? Or yeah. Thanks for the class. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the class. Thank you for attending. Uh, do you suggest that we should go through the proof of quartic reciprocity? Um, it's if you want to, but it's not very like it's just something you it's somewhat convoluted and you probably won't remember it. Like it's not a proof that you keep in mind. But could it be useful sometimes? Um, there are some nice ideas, but it's not it's not going to be that useful. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. If you want more questions, I'll send like a piece of similar to with questions similar to this. Okay, thank you for attending. Yeah. Thanks for the class.